Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to the new video. Today I want to take a look with you at the new Red Naturia Runic deck. We just played three hours of live stream with the deck and uh, had a lot of T-Lament uh, matchups, of course. I want to show you the deck list, go over every card, explain to you what it does and uh, then make you a sort of guide. We will look at some replays and I will explain to you the basic combo lines and what you can do with this deck, but I will also do it when I show you the cards singular. So. Let me first like introduce you to how this deck works in this meta. So I think this is a very strong deck and a tier 1 contender, but the problem at the moment is that against tier elements this deck has a really bad matchup. So I am not quite sure if you can like really reach diamond 1 with this deck at the moment. I think when tier element rotates out of the format or gets weaker then you can possibly do it. Then uh, runic uh, as a whole will get better. But as of right now the matchup is pretty tough. I have some replays against tier elements and you can see that you can win the matchup. But nevertheless it's really rough. And I also have to comment a bit on a few cards here in the list. Uh, on which I think it's maybe not perfect or you could swap out the cards. So the problem with T elements is the shufflers at first because obviously Mudora and Keldo can shuffle back your runic quick play spells from the graveyard into your deck when you activate your fountain. That of course is a problem. They can also shuffle back your for example Naturia Mole Cricket which is a really important card in the graveyard that you basically need to resummon. So there are a lot of things that really work against this deck unfortunately there are other things like uh, the runic flashing fire which normally is a really strong card destroying a special summoned monster but the problem is that a lot of times when you uh, destroy one special summoned monster it will be a tier monster and then it, its effect will activate in the grave so there is a lot of like anti synergy when it comes to this deck and the runic matchup uh, the tier limit matchup sorry the other unfortunate thing is that this deck cannot run cards like shifter because it really cannot play under shifter and that is the other unfortunate part because if you do not face uh, T elements in the higher tiers then you might as well face decks that are prepared against T elements and th they play Shifter and some uh, and DD Crow and stuff like that. And that is also really bad against the deck. Of course you don't want to get your runic spells into the banished pile but you want them in your graveyard instead. So that's like the situation right now in the t element meta i think as i already said when t element gets weaker i think at the end of this month we will see a ban list that will like uh, regulate some stuff i think this deck can then become very strong in the tcg this was one of the stronger strongest decks in the recent big tournament series that there was of course in the tcg there is no real t element anymore but more kashtira kashtira is the strongest deck right there and obviously also the deck the big deck we will get next so I think this is a good investment in the future. Uh, if you want to know whether you should buy the new pack where you can find the new Naturia cards, I've made a video um, where I go over the pack and explain to you how I would work with the pack uh, depending on different situations. It's up there in the info bracket. So let's go through the cards and let's look at them. We have Naturia Mole Cricket. This is a new card that just came out in this new pack and it's really important really strong card for the deck the funny thing is that you can like differentiate the old naturia cards from the new ones because the old ones like sacred tree and blessing they are not once per turn and the new ones like mole cricket and camellia are once per turn also the sunflower here is an old card not once per turn so they are very old but of course nowadays cards do not get printed uh, without the one time per um, turn clause because it's basically too strong and uh, this is what happens here we have the new cards that are once per turn and as i already said natura mole cricket is the first one and really important one so this one can start your whole combo line this is a good normal summon um, you can during the main phase quick effect so your main phase and your opponent's main phase you can tribute this card and then special summon one natura monster from your deck or and this is easily achievable you can special summon two natura monsters if your opponent controls a monster with the highest attack on the field even if it's tight so obviously this has zero attack zero defense and a card that you will often often have on the field as well is Yugen with zero attack and zero defense. Maybe you have a Camellia which also does not have very high stats. Naturia Sunflower as well. So it's pretty easy to get this um, um, this this needed uh, like thing here to have this checked so you can activate the effect. 
and then you can summon your sunflower and your camellia these are basically the two cards that you will summon from your naturia mole cricket and these are two monster negates so you can once monster negate with the naturia camellia effect we'll come to this in a moment and then monster negate with the sunflower but more to that in a moment then also if your opponent special summons a monster from the extra deck so everything works fusion summon as well when it comes to t elements or you special summon a naturia monster from the extra deck this is then the naturia beast mainly um, note here that i do not play the other naturia card the trap naturia beast because i think negating traps is not that important in this matter but obviously you can also play it and it is an ultra rare i didn't want to craft it um yeah so when you summon a naturia monster from the extra deck while this card is in your graveyard and of course you are attributing this so this goes to the graveyard then you can special summon this so really strong card with really a lot of effects i will show you the combo line that you basically use for this then you have the sunflower this is more simple when your opponent monster effect is activated quick effect you contribute one naturia monster and this card so two cards that will be your camellia and your sunflower and then negate the activation and destroy that card which is also always important and i will explain in a moment when we come to camellia why you have two monster negates when you have both of them on the field then of course maxi nothing to say to that we have keldo we have three modora because um this is against T-Element, so we can shuffle back the T-Element fusion cards and at least interrupt them a bit. But uh, there are also some cool targets that you can shuffle back here, uh, mainly the tree, in my opinion, because when the tree gets dumped to the graveyard, then you can draw another Naturia card. So that's why that is important. And then we come to Naturia Camellia, the other new card, which also has the once per turn clause. So Camellia, now uh, Naturia Camellia has the effect if this card is normal or special summoned. So special summon via your Mole Cricket, for example. Um, then you can send one Naturia card from your deck to the graveyard. When it comes to this, you are always sending or, or basically always sending your Sacred Tree because Sacred Tree can then search you another Naturia card to the hand. Um, note here, and I said it already, this is not once per turn. So you can basically send three, tr three trees in one turn that was tough to say, and can get three cards to hand. This is the first effect and it's really strong. And then if you would tribute a monster to activate an Arturia monster's effect, you can send the top two cards of your deck to the graveyard instead. So let's look at this more closely. So if you activate your Sunflower effect, Sunflower says you can tribute one Arturia monster and this card. So this is your activation condition. But if you have the Camellia on the field, then you can like once a turn you can activate Camellia's effect and then you do not need to tribute this and this and you can only uh, pitch the top two cards of your deck to the graveyard instead. So like the first monster negate that you have is by using the Sunflower but paying the cost with Camellia's effect and then the second time you can again use the Sunflower because this is not once per turn and then you have to destroy Sunflower and Camellia. But it's very easy to get these back to the field in this deck so don't worry about that. Um, exactly. So this is the other effect of Camellia. And if your opponent normal or special summons a monster, this is again another effect that you can activate. You can only use each effect. It says here, if your opponent normal or special summons a monster, you can special summon one material monster from your graveyard. So you can already see this thing here. In addition, is also able to revive, for example, your Sunflower or your Cricket. And if you revive your Cricket, then of course you can once again use your Cricket to maybe summon another batch of Camellia, another Cricket, and so on. So these cards basically recycle themselves and add a lot of value. And also, of course, um, sending the top two cards of the graveyard uh, of the deck to the graveyard, you can also hit your tree again and then draw cards. But you could also hit your Runic Crick play spells and uh, when they are in the grave you can of course recycle them via your runic fountain then we are playing one foolish burial goods to send the tree and start your combo line but you could also send a runic play, uh, spell if you need it then of course i do not need to explain this to you we have runic fountain to recycle the runic spells we have uh, two runic tip we would uh, play three if we could we have a three flashing fire which i already said in this meta is not that amazing unfortunately not that amazing against tier elements so you could argue putting one of them out but the thing is that i do not want to cut down on the runic package even more uh, we have already lost a lot of the cards in freezing crisis and destruction and also slumber so that's quite unfortunate otherwise you would definitely put three of these into into the deck and i then would put out the evenly matched i think and then we have Freezing Curses, you have Destruction 2, 2 Slumber, we have a Smiting Storm, Golden Droplet, 
and dispelling as i already said i think i do not need to explain to you the runic uh, engine but i will explain to you in a moment why uh, these engines work together so effectively and note here this i have forgotten this is a tuner not uh, really important then we have Notorial Blessing, a quick play spell that you can, um, also your normal line is you summon your Notoria Mole quick, a normal summon, then you can tribute this, you special summon your Camellia from the deck, Camellia then sends the Notoria Sacred Tree to the graveyard and then you grab your Notoria Blessing. This is not once per turn by the way, the Blessing as well. So the effect that you will most likely use is the first one, special summon one Notoria monster from your hand or graveyard. Really strong effect, you can special summon your Mole Cricket, you can even special summon the Cricket in your opponent's turn, you can special Special summon a camellia in your opponent's turn, and we will see in the replays how I managed to use the card. Uh, the other uh, effect that is quite uh, good is that immediately after this effect resolves, synchro summon one synchro monster using monsters you control as material, including a Naturia monster. So by having Naturia monsters on the field, you can activate this and then synchro summon. Obviously, you can synchro summon into your Naturia beast, or maybe your Baron, or maybe a Chen Ying, depending on what the situation is. But this is really cool because if you um, notice that you are up against a deck who will play a lot of spells then you could use this to then go into Naturia Beast because uh, there are a lot of scenarios in which you will have the Camellia and your Sun... Uh, no not the Sunflower, the Camellia and your Cricket on the field, that's right. And it would make sense to tribute the Cricket to get to the Sunflower so we have your double negate but if you then, uh, we are in, in the opponent's turn in this example, but if you then notice that your opponent will play a lot of spells, then you could uh, instead activate your blessing that you have uh, on your field and then just synchro summon these two because they are level 5 into your Naturia beast. So you are able to adapt your play in your opponent's turn, which is always very strong. And the third effect, um, this is not uh, really relevant uh, as we are not playing fusion monsters. Uh, that include Naturia as a material. Then we have Triple Evenly Matched. This card, I'm not quite sure how much I liked it, though in the three hours I played on livestream today, I got the going first coin flip very often, so there weren't a lot of situations where, where I uh, could use the Evenly Matched, but uh, I noticed that, of course, you have to skip your battle phase because your runic uh, spells, and then you cannot use your Evenly Matched effect, um, as effectively as you uh, would want to use it. Also, if you fountain is on the field then obviously you cannot activate evenly match so i'm not quite sure how much i like the card um but yeah uh, i will test this out uh, further and there are a lot of deck lists to come on master duel central of uh no master, master duel meta sorry of course so we will see how the pros adapt uh the deck list and then we have naturia sacred tree three times if this card is sent to the graveyard, add one Naturia card from your deck to your hand, except Naturia Sacred Tree. So this is the important thing. You will send this to the grave. You can also send this via your runic spells to summon your Hugin, and then you have to discard a card. You can discard the tree. And if you do that, you can also then grab a Naturia card to your hand. And you will most likely, as I already said, grab your blessing here because this is a strong revive card. This is basically monster reborn, but also monster special summon from hand. And it is the synchro summon, so this is really strong. This is why you use this. And this is the additional effect, but as I, I would say, you will rarely use this. You can tribute one earth insect monster, uh, special summon one level four or lower earth plant monster from your deck. I'm not quite sure you can, you could like, like tribute these and then summon the sunflower with this, but you can use the effect of mole cricket as well to get to the sunflower. So this is really only used because of the first effect and you basically do not use it as a trap. Like in one game, I had this on the field and then I even popped this with my own Baron because then it is also going to the graveyard. We are playing two Hugin, we are playing two Gary, nothing more to say to that. We are playing one Aturia Beast, which of course, when a spell card is activated, quick effect, you can send the top two cards of your deck to the graveyard. This is awesome for the deck, this works with the deck and negate the activation and destroy it. So you basically can negate every spell your opponent plays. Then we have the Stardust Charge Warrior, another new card from the pack, which uh, fortunately is a rare and nothing more. <coughs> so this is one of the tuners you will get in via your Camellia together with, for example, your Sunflower, because they together are level 6. But you can also, and this is quite cool, and this is where the engines work together, you can also use your Hugin, because this is also level 2. So you can go Hugin and your Camellia, which you basically 
always have on your first board, like not always, but most of the time. And then you can make the Stardust Charge Warrior. And when this card is Synchro Summoned, you can draw one card. So this is basically the thing this uh, card does. And then you are going to climb further into the Baron de Fleur if you can. This is basically the goal of this card. You could also go into your Coral Dragon and note here that this uh, is not a tuner, though your Coral Dragon is a tuner. That's important to understand. This is the second card you can go into with the Camellia and the Hugin or the Camellia and the Sunflower. And this, once per turn, you can discard one card. Once again, this works with the deck because you could discard your tree or discard more of the runic spells, so you can recycle them. And then uh, target one card your opponent controls, card, it says, not only monster, and destroy it. That's nice, but this also is, once again, a bit conflicting with tier elements because if you destroy them, then they get to activate their effect. If this Synchro Summon card is sent from your field to the graveyard, so via climbing into Baron, for example, you can draw one card. So both of these draw one card, but this one draws it like on summon and this one draws it on leaving the field, but also has the additional effect. Always think about if you want the synchro here or you want the tuner, because this obviously depends. This is a tuner and if you want to use your Camellia, which is also a tuner, then you cannot go into Baron because this needs a non-tuner. So you basically need to go into your Stardust Charge Warrior and then you can go into Camellia and go into Baron. Then Baron, of course, Shenning, of course, you have Abyss Dweller against the Tierlemans matchup. Uh, Evil Swarm, Exiton, Knight to clear the board. This never came up. Baguska never came up as well. You can make them via your your uh, Shizu cards and obviously uh, the Camellia is also level 4. And Gary is also level 4. So if you need a non-synchro card, so you can use your Coral Dragon and a Gary if you have it. And then you can also go into your Baron. Um, or you can combine your Gary together with uh, Camellia or Vudora or Keldo to go into your XYZs that need two level 4 monsters. Also, we have Dugaris here. If you need more cards, you can draw two cards, then discard one. Could discard, for example, the tree if you have it. So that works. Obviously, we are playing Zeus because we are playing XYZs. You could argue not using the Zeus because uh, we are skipping the battle phase most of the time. You have to better plan your Zeus in this deck. Um, if you have like a card that you like more here in the extra deck, you could replace the Zeus, but I like to have it. And then we have Donna Dagger for Hire, the new Ultra Rare for Hire card, which is quite nice. Two monsters for different types. It's easy, achievable. And then you can target one monster for Hire you control. This is then the Donna and one monster your opponent controls and destroy them. This allows you to get rid of some problematic cards and is a really cool flexible link too that is newly added to the game and will be played in a lot of decks. So that's it when it comes to the deck list and now let's hop in into some replays so i can show you how the deck plays so guys let's look at the basic combo that you can do with the, the naturia cards as i already talked about you can normal summon your mole cricket then attribute it to summon your camellia camellia on field will activate to pitch your uh, like another naturia card to the grave normally you would pitch the sacred tree but there are also situations um, given the fact that you do not have a mole cricket in the graveyard that you sometimes maybe want to pitch a mole cricket into the graveyard because out of the graveyard it can activate its effects we are pitching a tree and activating the tree remember our tree is not once per turn we are mostly getting the naturia blessing here uh, let's imagine this tree would not be there but i will like show you how this ca hand can develop further in a moment we can then play the blessing that we just draw to resummon our cricket what you can do here is because this is a tuner we can now go into a naturia beast you can go into this put it in attack position here because it does not have a lot of defense then the effect of a mole cricket activates sorry because uh, a naturia monster was special summoned from the extra deck note here that if your opponent special summons a monster from the extra deck this also would work so you can get this back to the field we are getting this back to the field and now we are in this position so what you can do now obviously you can go into link two place but uh, here is the point where it all ends if you only have the Naturia Mole Cricket in hand. So this is uh, the one card combo that we have done here. What we can do here at this moment, and this is why this works great together. So first we are going to activate Foolish Burial. So we are pitching our last tree to the graveyard. Remember, this is not once per turn. Neither is our spell card. Uh, we are grabbing another spell card. So now we can revive our our 
our camellia which is once again tuna and now of course we have once again place when it comes to synchro summoning as you can see here we could put everything in to make a baron for example but obviously we are not finished here we are activating freezing curses now and now we can do two things we could summon the gary to have a level four for further synchro plays or we could summon the hugen level two which allows us to discard the next tree to once again grab our last Naturia blessing from the deck. So let's just think about this for a moment. We have one tuner We have then another level four that would be level eight. Uh, we cannot do a lot with level eight What we could do Hugen and uh, the Camellia together would go for the Coral Dragon or the Stardust Synchro guy So let's go for Hugen. This also allows us to drop our uh, last tree and grab our Runic Fountain which of course uh, while we not have a uh, runic card here, uh, it's not that impactful right now, but uh, it's okay. Another good play would have been to drop uh, the Keldo uh, into the grave so the effect could be activated. Right now we can do a synchro summon, um, just go into uh, level 6 synchro. In this case it does not really matter which one uh, you choose um, because... Uh, both of them will draw us a card. This one will draw us a card now. Hopefully we can draw into a runic quick play a spell Let's see and there is one awesome so we can now obviously go for the fountain and what you could do now with uh, this one here. Let's just So this is not a tuner notice here. This is not a tuner, but we will resummon our camellia from the grave so let's say we want to special summon a Gary or something you could obviously also search for another runic spell um, so to have one more draw but let's just draw these and note here quick little thing um, though no it's not no we have like if uh, we would not have the third uh, blessing in hand obviously it's a bit risky to draw so we are getting our camellia back and now we have everything that we need to go into our baron to have another omni negate we use the synchro guy here and uh, there is our baron so hindsight it would have been much more like useful to summon another Hugen than a gary mistake of mine why is that Hugen protects your cards from a destruction so if another card you control would be destroyed by card effect, you could banish this card you control instead. So for example, a Raigeki, we could then use our Hugen. So keep that in mind, that was not optimal. And now uh, let's just pass over to our opponent. And normally what you would want to do, but I think we will not manage to get this here. Now you can activate your Mole Cricket to summon from the deck. And what you want to summon from the deck is the Sunflower because the Sunflower is a monster negate. The problem we are facing here right now is that, of course, Naturia Mole Cricket can only summon two monsters if your opponent controls the highest attack monster. Obviously, we have a Baron, and I don't think that the NPC will summon something bigger, but let's just imagine we would summon two just to show you basically the end of the line. Then you would summon um, the Sunflower. Note here that you could negate uh, in effect because you can tribute your Naturia Beast, but in an ideal world you will not always end on a baron and have high attack monsters on the field in an ideal world you can then activate your cricket on your opponent's turn to summon the sunflower and the camellia and then you have two more monster negates so this is the basic combo line that you can achieve with one card that was the naturia mole cricket and extension means that you have more trees that you have more blessings obviously because you can only do one normal summon this in this case is our naturia mole cricket and obviously, if I have another Camellia in hand, I cannot normal summon the Camellia. But what I can do is use the Naturia Blessing to special summon one Naturia monster from your hand or graveyard. So I can also special summon from hand. So when it comes to extension in terms of the Naturia cards, you are basically always looking for getting more trees to the graveyard to get more blessings into hand. So this is what you can think about when it comes to your basic starting line, which, which normally is your Cricket, and then your extended line, which then is more Naturia Sacred Trees into more Naturia Blessings. So let's look at a replay together where I played against the, the Fiat Tier Elements deck. And as I already said, this deck is not great against Tier Elements. This deck will become better in the future, so you could invest in it. Uh, just keep in mind that it struggles against the matchup right now. But I will show you a cool uh, replay. So we are going Runic Spell and summoning the Hugen because 
what else can we do with this hand? I am pitching evenly matched here. So at this moment, sorry, at this moment I was not, um, I, like I didn't realize that I was playing at Steel Mets, obviously. I was considering pitching the Keldor, so it is in the grave, versus pitching the evenly match, because in the match before I've got um, severely burned by this card, uh, that was, uh, it was not useful at all. Unfortunately, now I'm seeing it is Steel Mets, because he reacts to my uh, Hugen with the halfness. Um, given that, I would have pitched the Keldor, of course. He goes halfness, chain link two, I go max C just to draw. And obviously, uh, they typically extend the place even further, and so I could draw even more. And they are milling good mills. I get my fountain. Now we are activating the Kelbeck, so mill five, the Merli, to get two kit colors. Uh, in my graveyard, uh, nothing special right here. We are fusing with hand and grave for the kit. And then mill five. Let's see what we are milling here. We have milled a tree. Yay. That's good. And they have milled uh, more stuff to do. So they are activating their kit here. They are activating graveyard scream. They are activating graveyard halfness. So they play into our maxi. We are activating the Keldo here to put back the halfness the, and the two shufflers. Now, of course, this is what you always want to do against the elements. I am putting back the halfness, which just fusion summoned and both of the uh, shufflers here he activates his shuffler and puts back for some reason i'm not quite sure i think he understood this wrong he puts back my tree though tree still activates uh, this is good for me because still tree uh, the, the tree still activates and i get it back into the deck so a mistake of my enemy for sure he this back does not fusion summon he can search searches crime Kid color searches or pitches Shiren, and I get my first mole cricket here because I still notice I have my normal summon. Otherwise, of course, you would search your true blessing. Um, I am searching my mole cricket. He goes into rule colors, giving me another card. And because rule colors was a special summon from the extra deck, I can now activate the mole cricket out of the graveyard. He negates it. Obviously, this was my plan, so I can now normal summon the other cricket. That's what we are going to do. Summon the cricket, activate effect. And because you can see this right now, that's what I wanted to show you in the replay before. Um, mm, oh, what what is the situation here? Oh no, we are just we are just getting the Camellia here. Camellia sends the tree to the graveyard, which gets us a blessing. Blessing is then able to resummon the cricket. I activate the fountain playing uh, the droplet. The, that's a bit annoying here because I was basically forced to use Droplet to make him draw one in order for me to draw three, but that's a good deal. I am drawing three. He goes max C, that's all right because I'm not planning on doing um, a lot more. He goes Keldo, shuffling back two of my spells. And this is a problem uh, which Rulik faces because the shufflers can shuffle back your spells. So I only draw one, I draw the Sunflower, I uh, place the evenly matched here and end the turn. Drawing the Sunflower is pretty bad because you basically want to summon it via your Mole Cricket. So this is not optimal, you may want to normal summon this or pitch it in the graveyard so it can be activated. At the end of the turn we unfortunately still have the Keldo in hand, which we did not pitch in the first turn. He draws, main phase one, and he plays Scream. I activate Destruction to get rid of the card and activate um, the effect of my mole cricket to basically tag out of the field. I use uh, the effect of Camellia to pay for that, the top two cards of my deck, so I have more runic de cards in uh, the, the graveyard to draw free after this year. This is the thinking. He negates this, so the cricket will get negated and destroyed, but that's all right. This gets destroyed. We are now drawing three. He activates Shiren and Scream in the grave. I activate my fountain to draw three. We are drawing three. He draws the Suli Ek. And note here that I forgot to play my Max C. <laughs> so what is happening is he wants to spin back my uh, Runic Fountain and because 
Uh, monster was normal or special summoned, I can now rewive one of my natural cards. This is the power of Camellia. I want to keep my fountain though. So this one comes back to the field and now I'm going to freeze and curse this because I do not want to get my fountain back into my deck. Negate this here and as you notice I have not played my maxi, big mistake. So I can now resummon uh, the cricket. The one cricket was summoned by the camellia's effect, which I showed you if your opponent normal or special summons a monster. The other was uh, summoned because a monster was special summoned from the X deck. So he puts two on the field. Um, never put your spells and traps in main phase one on the field. We will see in a moment why that is. He plays um, the rhino heart and goes for a kid Carlos fusion summon has all the fusion summons in the world. Obviously we have our evenly matched. This is the reason why you do not do this stuff here. Also playing the scream, also don't do it in main phase one. He's going to attack. This obviously goes back into our extra deck. Attack, attack. And at the end of the battle phase, we are activating our evenly matched and he gets rid. And this was, this I, I was really happy about that we got rid of the Kaleido heart. So never place your spells and traps in main phase 1, but do it in main phase 2 after the battle phase. You saw why now. We are drawing. I activate more quick to, quick to tag out. I just want to like bait the effect of the rule colors here. He goes for it. Awesome, because I still obviously have my normal summon. Negates my mole cricket. I go for flashing fire, special summon my Hugin to get rid of my tree, activating, getting rid of the tree, and then activate the fountain to draw three, and this is the point where my opponent realizes this game does not look that good. And now he scoops, uh, we have drawn very, very good stuff here we can still get the third blessing i'm not quite sure if we have it in the grave but here you can see that you can outvalue your tailor opponents but um all in all it is a really tough matchup and you will lose more than you will win i guess and um, it does not even come down to skill i would say this deck is like inferior to tier elements but as i already said and i want to point this out again at the end of this guide now Hang in there when Telemann leaves the battlefield, this deck will become a lot better and it is a strong deck. Um, don't get confused by this, don't don't get this the wrong way, it's really strong. It's already strong now, but it will be strong when Telemann leaves and the holy Ishizu cards leave because without Telemann's there is basically no need to play a lot of Ishizu cards. They will leave the format and then this here works way, way better. Of course, everything else will leave the format as well when there is no Telemann's then um, not every deck needs to play dimensional shifter, so they leave as well. So everything is good for the T elements uh, for the Runic Interior deck in the future. I hope you liked the, uh, liked the guide. If you like my videos, then please subscribe to the channel. Please hit the thumbs up. That helps out a lot. And I hope we see each other in the next video.